There you are. I've been looking for you. We have much to discuss. You know, lately, I've been feeling a bit old. And I can't help but think, is it me? Or is it everyone else? For the games of yore, the magic and the mystery, the long lost items and the mystical adventures, they just seem to feel at home. Now, the games that come out today that are new and refreshing and a sight to be seen turn out to be like a fish flopping in the water. And I, unable to swim, drowning in a mass of tainted, toxic, chemicalized water. Frankly, I'm bored. So I begin to wonder, why is that? Is this correct? Is this a problem with me or a problem with the world? I've cast many scrying eyes, and all I see is other people with the same exact thought. And I begin to wonder, why is that? Let's talk about it. Hello everybody, SK here, and I just wanted to talk about something that's really been on my mind lately. And there's a reason for it that I'll touch on in a little bit, but I feel like I'm starting to get old. Now this is kind of a somewhat of a funny comment to make. I'm only 25 years old, but I've been playing video games since I was a really young kid. Um, I've played games like Pokemon Fire Red, Pokemon Leaf Green. I had the original Game Boy that had no color. It was all in black and white, and I played uh, yellow, blue. I've still never played red. Um, but I've played a lot of older games. You know, I played classic World of Warcraft as a kid, and I got my character all the way to level 55 and then unlocked the, the Death Knight inside of Wrath of the Lich King. And I have loved playing video games. The same is true of old movies. So for instance, I've watched the Lord of the Rings trilogy, which I think is amazing, especially the extended edition, which I believe is the real story. Um, I loved The Hobbit. I used to love a lot of old school movies and such. Not necessarily old school, but they're old school for me. You know, they came out when I was younger or before my, you know, I was born. And as I get older, there are just a lot of games and movies but we'll focus on games in this video, that just feel bad. And I wonder, is it just me? Am I just getting old and so I kind of have this nostalgia for older games that I've already played or games that came out when I was younger and had that sort of energy to them? What's going on? So this is something that's really been on my mind because I've had a huge desire to go back and play older games for some reason. I've been playing classic World of Warcraft in hardcore version. So I've been grinding and grinding. Currently, as of today, I'm level 42 and I'd like to hit 60 at some point. Um, I've died a bunch of times along the way. I've played games like Borderlands 2, which still hits it for me. Or I wanted to play Might and Magic 6, a game I played a lot as a kid with my grandmother. We'd play for hours and hours. And if you're familiar with the game and the bosses at all, there's this boss called Q. We would spend literally like two hours saving, hit him, saving, hit him, because he would always one-shot us. And I'm convinced as I get older that we were doing something wrong. And while I've been playing these older games, I'm reminded that they were all really good. And here's what I mean. The quality of them is substantial. So they may not be able to do everything, right? You can't... Um, they are not a zombie game that also has really fast movement and mechanics, that also has a really, really uh, well-defined, uh, very deep leveling system, that also has a very interesting random loot system, that also blank, blank, blank. Instead, they are really good at whatever they are really good at. So Might Magic 6 is super good at the role-playing uh, mechanics. You know, your characters can get poisoned and then you have to go find someone to un uh, to heal their disease. Or maybe you can if you have the right, you know, build that you chose. Or you find a cool magical weapon, but you don't know what it does. So you have to have it go uh, get, 
identified so you even know what it does. Along with things like all of the townsfolk have different utilities and purposes. There are very few that are just kind of there. There are a lot that, oh, I can help you find more food if you give me a portion of your gold, or I actually can make your spell casting better, whatever. Um, the quests are very interesting, and if you follow what they say, you don't need a visual, you can often go find whatever it is you're looking to find for most of the things. You've got games like World of Warcraft that is such a fun leveling experience. I'm always excited to go find new locations. I feel like I'm going on a real adventure no matter where I go. And the landscapes all have very different tones. Not to mention, leveling up once every 10 levels feels so substantial. I think the only exception I found is maybe level 30 for certain classes, but level 10, you start to unlock talent points, which are exciting because they let you actually start to build your own you know, character. Specification, what you're Per, what you're personally good at. And then you have things like level 20 where you can start doing dungeons and you often unlock your bigger ability either at 20 or 22 in the case of like a rogue. Then you've got level 30, which I think is kind of more in the middle. Um, a lot of classes I think are just kind of normal for 30 with the exception of druid, which you get a cool uh, speed boost, which is nice. Level 40, you get your mounts and you get your ability to unlock plate armor among other things. So I say all this because they are really good at what they're really good at. And they don't try and be more than that. World of Warcraft is very good at a lot of things and it doesn't do a lot of things at all because it would kind of undermine what it is good at. It had that focus. And something I've noticed when I've played other games, they lack a few things. So let's start with the first concept. I think games are better when they are a simple, cohesive engine. Instead of being everything, which ends up making them nothing and often soulless. So I'll use Skyrim as an example. Skyrim lets you do a lot of things. I think it lets you do too much and that is one of the game's weaknesses. You can do everything no matter who you are, but it, the game itself, is really good at making the adventure interesting it makes doing the quests fun yes the quests are not the very best quests but the characters and the stories are somewhat interesting and compelling and they bring you in now let's take a look at something like starfield i put a lot of hours into starfield and i'll tell you this i really enjoyed starfield until i tried playing the game starfield built here's what i mean when I just ran around on random planets and I built whatever and I tried leveling up just to kill things and looting whatever, I had fun. And then at one point I went, I would like to actually play their game. I'm going to start doing some of their quests. I did not enjoy that. I did not enjoy that at all. I could tell that their quest lines were not nearly as well crafted. They were not nearly as well put together. Um, they had the same Skyrim-esque, like, you're instantly thrown in and you're instantly a part of it. But because all the planets are just everywhere, and there's so many planets, and they're so random, they're not fine-tuned, they're not, you know, made specifically for all of your just exploration and whatnot, it got old significantly faster, which is sad, because I was, a, I was really excited for Starfield. Another example, and this isn't an example of a specific game, more so a mindset of a lot of games, is every game wants to be a battle royale now. Actually, I'll use Call of Duty. I've played a lot of the Call I played all of the Call of Duties as a kid. I played the second Call of Duty, the third Call of Duty, fourth, fifth, etc., all the way up until I think it's World War II. I actually really liked World War II, and I quit after World War II because I didn't like the direction that the games were going they try to do everything everything is we want things to be faster we want them to have more options and more and more and more and more and more here's the problem less is often more you can have a lot of things and if they are not well crafted if they are not very interesting if they are not the soul of the game the game becomes nothing because it's everything and I do not like that. That is why I have not bought a Call of Duty since, among the microtransaction issues and, and things like that. The next thing is, I'm a big believer in letting a story die so that the story can still live. So here's a good example. I do not believe in making endless sequels or remaking old games very often. 
I think if you're going to do that, it should be very purposeful, okay? And here's an example of where I think it might be purposeful. Because Bloodborne was never ported over from PlayStation and so many people wanted it, I think that would be a great game to remake with maybe a little bit better graphics and just make it available everywhere, right? There's a huge purpose there because a huge chunk of people never got to experience it to begin with. You know what I don't want remade? I would not want a game like Baldur's Gate 3 remade. Baldur's Gate 3 was magic and a bottle and it was high quality, it was well put together, and everyone got the chance to play it. You know what would be the point of remaking it or adding a sequel to it? Money. That would be a reason. Now, I'm not saying that there couldn't be a sequel if Larian Studios were to be making the sequel, but they're not. So I'm not gonna buy Baldur's Gate 4. I'm not interested because the people who made that magic in the bottle are not making that game. So Baldur's Gate 4 it's not Baldur's Gate 4, it's I want to be Baldur's Gate 3 with a hugely different vision, a hugely different set of hands touching it, and so it leaves me non-excited. I believe in letting a story die. Now here's a great example of letting a story die. Cyberpunk. I loved Phantom Liberty. Phantom Liberty's story was so compelling. I cried when I beat the game. I did. It was so good. It was amazing and it was so well worth it. I would not want them to try and like continue the story of Cyberpunk. I think that would be terrible. Same with the anime. I loved the anime. I was super grateful at the direction they took and the way they ended it and it stayed true to the show. With that said, if they somehow came out with a second season and tried to re, you know, redo some of the things that happened there, I'm not going to spoil it, but redo some of the things that happened there and like all of that, I would not watch it and I would be very frustrated. I'm okay with him making a whole new anime saying it's like in the same universe, but it has nothing to do with the original or, you know, maybe some Easter eggs or whatever, but it is not the same game or the same show and it should not be. So let a story die so that it can just continue on. And there are other games that have this and do this very well, but I see it less and less with newer games. A lot of newer games, they have this issue. I think this is one of the bigger issues with newer games, which is <clears throat> telling is okay, but showing is everything. It is a requirement. I've said this before when I talked about anime, but there's only so many times I can hear, he looks like a totally different person now. Why don't you show me that he's a totally different person now? You can tell me some things that maybe cannot be explained, but if I'm having to listen or you show on screen in the case of video games, all these different things and the NPCs have to explain it to me like I'm four, I don't think that's a good game. Look, I played a lot of Elden Ring and I'd never played a Dark Souls game before. Elden Ring did not explain very much. Even now, when it has all these added hints, it doesn't explain a whole lot. I'm okay with that. I'm not an idiot. If I can't figure it out, I'll look it up if I care that much. Every, I think most people will just look it up. With that said, it shows you a lot. A lot of the mechanics and whatnot, it shows you itself. And if you pay attention, you will find that out. And if you don't pay attention, you won't. Oh well. It, you know, it's part of the gaming experience. I think you should show things that are vital, that are not self-explained. If they are self-explained and you're showing me anyways, you're wasting my time, and I feel like you think I'm an idiot. And maybe if I am an idiot, I need to take the time to learn it. So either way, I don't need to know. And so I'm a big believer in just showing, not telling. Or sorry, telling, not showing when possible. I also think the, the key to success is actually through failure. So success is a deflating floating device in the middle of the ocean. That is what success is. Failure is a raft before you go to the ocean. Sure, the raft might you know have some holes in it and it might start to sink and you might have to patch it up and you might have to work on it. But then eventually you continue to work on it and there you go, you have a working raft. If you go to the middle of the ocean with what you had yesterday and you don't 
you don't try and improve on that you don't try and work on that it's just going to fall now what that what i'm trying to get out with that analogy is i find a lot of games don't take a lot of unnecessary steps and i get it money you know what already has worked so you don't want to try new things because they may not sell they may not be exciting to an audience etc i'll tell you this though as someone who plays games i do not want to play the same game twice now that's not always true, okay, but as a common rule, I do not want to buy the game same, same game twice. I would just replay it. What I do want is I want a new exciting adventure. Even if it's the same general idea, but there's a new spin on it. Maybe like in the case of Borderlands 2. I, I loved Borderlands 1, but Borderlands 2 is one of my all-time favorites. I'm playing the game and I'm being helped by Angel again. And I'm going through this and I'm going through this all to find out she was betraying me the entire time. And then I find out she was actually a victim of the main big bad villain the entire time. And then I find out the villain had his entire life just uprooted and pretty much destroyed. He was pretty much a good guy, or at least he had a good heart at the very beginning. And I can still tell that now that he's more of a villain. He thinks he's the good guy. And he's trying to do what he believes is actually the right thing okay that is a hugely different spin than the first game that is why that game should exist when i played borderlands 3 i beat it once and i never wanted to play it again the story was not that it was nowhere near compelling as compelling as borderlands 2. it did not feel nearly as purposeful the villains were not nearly as interesting uh, the gameplay was better. I'll give it that. The, the actual sliding in gameplay was better, but it just felt like an abundance of everything. There were so many more guns and so many more drops. And I'm over here thinking, why do I care? They're not even that, they're not high quality and they're not super different and super useful compared to one another. They're like, oh, this one, okay, I'll just pick up this one. Whereas when I got a legendary in Borderlands 2, more often than not, I remember all of those still. I still remember the one that absorbs ammo that you can get from the machine boss. I thought that was awesome. And I still, like to this day, I want to get the perfect version of that. Similar to the idea that uh, not wanting to take these sort of risky steps in different directions, I wanted to talk about how, and this is true of movies a lot too, and shows, and this is why I have a hard time connecting with them, and I'll actually use a movie example for what I mean. but. It feels like creators of different entertainment are, they all wanna make the audience laugh, but they're all too, none of them are brave enough to try and make the audience cry. And that's not always the case. There are obviously outliers, but by and large, this has been my experience with both games and shows. So the example that I'll use is, I watched Tom Holland's Spider-Man, the first one, or, the second one. I watched the second Spider-Man. And I was not a big fan. It was all it, it felt like non-serious for most of it. Most of it was just like joking or like the characters knew stuff they really shouldn't and they didn't explain why because just Zendaya just knew that Peter Parker was Spider-Man because she just knew. And I'm like, okay, whatever. Contrast that with the original Spider-Man. Um, I forget I don't know if it's called the original Spider-Man, but Spider-Man 1 with Tobey Maguire as Spider-Man. I liked that because it was super serious. It felt like Peter Parker was this guy who just found superpowers and was learning how to use them and struggling to learn how to use them. And he was a goofball and there were funny moments, but it didn't feel like he was trying to be funny. It just felt like what happened was funny when he like climbs up the wall and then he falls off or whatever. But also I was genuinely super sad when his uncle died. And it was, it wasn't his fault, but it was kind of his fault for letting the guy get out. And it, I could see it in his eyes and his face, in the atmosphere, in the moment that the weight of his uncle's death just laid on top of him. And then in Spider-Man 3, where he's going through all of these emotional roller coasters of anger and, and this sort of toxicity because he has the black um, venom on top of him. And then he finds the person who killed his grandpa. And it's just so emotional. 
and it, it just hits very differently. It's very serious. Now, the same thing is true of The Lord of the Rings. I had not watched The Lord of the Rings until a couple of years ago, and I was taken aback. It was not meant to be all funny and all humor and all this and all that. There were moments that were funny. There were characters that were funny. But I, at no point in the back of my head did I think, wow, they're trying to be funny right now. They want me to try and laugh right now. They just did things that are funny and I laughed. I'm like, oh, Gandalf, you're just so funny. I didn't go, oh, Gandalf's telling me a joke. No, he wasn't even talking to me. I just happened to be able to watch. And the same is true of a lot of games. A lot of games I watch or I see, they're super non-serious. And maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm just sitting over here wanting something that no one else wants. But I love serious games. I love feeling like I am immersed in it and I can't look away. There's nothing wrong with funny games, but even Borderlands 2, it had a very compelling, serious story at several different moments. And the more I learned about Handsome Jack, the main villain, the more I began to empathize with him. Despite how all the evil things he did, it still broke my heart, the things that happened to him. And in Cyberpunk, Phantom Liberty especially, the entire time I needed, I didn't want, I needed to know what was gonna happen next. And the weight of the decision I made at a, at a very crucial moment weighed on me when I saw the result. I was like, oh my gosh, I did this. This was me. You know, I, uh, I'll use a, a movie example, and this will be the last for this talking point, but I just recently finished How I Met Your Mother, and I'm not going to ruin it for anybody, but let me just tell you this. I finished it, and I cried, and then the next day, I cried again at the gym, and I don't know if I'm ever going to be able to watch the show again, because it was so good and so powerful of an ending. I was not ready for it. It, was, it just really messed with me. And it made me think about life. It made me consider my own circumstances. And I was like, dude, I can't waste any more time on some things. Like there are just some things I need to make sure I, I like really get on top of. So all that to say, I want things that I can connect with. I don't mind humor and I don't mind funny things and I don't mind silly games occasionally. But when everything is a silly game, it really makes it hard for me to care. It really makes it hard for me to get interested in it because they all blend together. And all the jokes just feel old. So here's what I'm curious about for those of you who have watched this far. It, do you have the similar experiences? Do you feel somewhat of the same or am I kind of, is it really me? Just, I'm just living in my nostalgia thinking of all the old, you know, all the old stuff is better and all these young whippersnappers and you know, whatever. Or, you know, are you having a shared experience? Let me know in the comments below. So with that, I appreciate you for watching. Uh, a, word, a word from our wise mage. In closing, I want to say, life is an adventure. I seek out that which is worth my time and energy and effort. I seek out that which can lead to a brighter future. And while there are many games that I find and do not enjoy, I think they are made and missing pieces of old. There are still shining beacons of hope that leave me an old man much excited for the future of gaming, lest we can look back into the past and take what is ours and put that into future endeavors. That, I believe, is the future of gaming. Thank you for coming to listen to an old man talk, and I hope you have a magical rest of your day.